Assalamu alaikum everyone. Muhammad Sadiq al here. So uh, it's my day one of uh, starting practical deep learning for coders. Uh, built by Fast Guy, Jillian Howards, uh, Sylvan, and uh, Rachel Thomas. So I'll be, what I'll do uh, in this video and the upcoming videos is that I will go over the uh, lessons one by one. Uh, I, may, I may not cover them in one day, that's actually not possible. Uh, I'll cover them serially and I'll let you know. I mean, like uh, once uh, once I am in the middle of the middle of the lesson and later when I'm finished with the lesson, so what actually I got from the lesson and uh, what are the possibilities that can be done? And if I can do anything with that lesson, I mean, if we can make some cool stuff with the, uh, after that lesson, I'll also show you that. Uh, so let me get started. Oh, it, here's a cool thing before I started, I got something here that we can actually, uh, there are many questionnaires and uh, we can actually go through them after the uh, lecture. So this is actually a nice thing. <clears throat> okay, I'm starting. So uh, hello everybody and welcome to Deep Learning for Coders, lesson one. Um, this is the fourth uh, year that we've done this, um, but it's a, a very different and very special version for a number of reasons. So, so hello again, I'm uh, halfway through the video, I mean the first lecture. So what I got up until now, I actually <coughs> wrote them down in one of my books. So I'll share that with you also, no problem, after the, after the whole thing. Uh, okay, so uh, what was there? Uh, in the initial parts, there was introduction about themselves and Ask AI, and they, they actually have a book named Ask Book. I downloaded the whole things in and kept it in Google Pull Up because actually that's all I can afford. Uh, and later, they also talked about why, uh, why we need deep learning and why we don't need deep learning and some brief history about neural nets. Uh, the most interesting part about here is that, let me show you. Okay, so uh, they are actually following some uh, top-down approach, okay? So they're actually uh, believing in something like uh, playing first and uh, learning the things on the board. That's actually a good approach for uh, people who are like, as coders to solve the problems on the way. Okay, so, and later, uh, there's another thing about Fast AI is that it's built on basically PyTorch and uh, PyTorch is built on, built on Python. So uh, that's what uh, I got from the uh, first half. Uh, and uh, they also talked about some of their uh, Git repositories and where they keep the things. So. Uh, I'll actually share all the links in the description. Don't worry about that. And so here's the first AI documentation. You can find it here. It's very well written. I I, I, I actually went through it. And here's the uh, first, AI, first book. You can read the whole book here. But uh, what actually Jeremy says is that don't make this a whole new book. There's not, there's, there will be something unethical. Okay. So that's it. Let's start with the later part. Right, right. Okay, so I'm done with lecture one. So what I got from the uh, lecture, I mean, after I took a small break and uh, the initially the talked about this one, the first book. Uh, the first chapter, I mean, zero one intro. So, what Jeremy suggested is to go through the whole chapter, uh, at least the chapters that we can. So, I was uh, skimming through some of the things uh, earlier. So, what uh, I got from skimming, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so they have got this uh, nice 
your peer review paper if you want to know more about it. So I'll share the link below. No problem. So later they also talk about the software and the approaches. Uh, and yeah, it's okay. So let me talk about the lecture first. Uh, yeah. So after that they talk about how the model interprets the whole thing. Okay. So here's an important thing here uh, that uh, that seemed very interesting to me was the universal like, approximation theorem. So what the theorem says is that if you take stack linear and nonlinear layers one over another, uh, they'll eventually learn any type of function with any type of accuracy. I mean theoretically. So that's how actually neural networks work with the linear layer and the nonlinear layer, nonlinear layers. There may other theories, but that's the they're not science. Science. No, they're not. And uh, in this part he actually talks about gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent, and some other things. Uh, and here they talk about how their model interacts with the environment. Okay. So uh, here's a cool thing about here is that you can just call uh, doc. If, if you are confused about any of the uh, functions or any of the things in first day, you can just call the uh, doc function. I mean, if I write like doc or something, then it will actually work. So uh, what I'm doing here, I'll show you later. Okay. So but yeah. Uh, and later he actually uh, runs some state of the art models uh, like Image for image classification, image segmentation, uh, what was there? Uh, seg uh, text, tabular, and collaborative building. He runs all of those things. Uh, it's fast day library in five, six lines of code. That was pretty awesome, actually. Uh, I actually tried to uh, do some, all of the things here in Colab. Uh, in Colab, it was a bit different. Uh, I had to look through the uh, documentation here. Uh, so you have to import this thing first and later you can actually run the first day two version because Google pull up uh, a first day uh, version one in built in. So you can't actually just write this and go along with it. And uh, uh, okay, uh, I'm actually running the experiments and checking if it actually works. That's actually awesome thing. Yeah. And later, uh, what more? Oh, uh, there's another thing. Uh, at the end of the book, there are two parts that I liked. Uh, one is questionnaire and further research. So what Jeremy suggested is that to check out uh, the questionnaires. So you should do that also. I, I, I am gonna do that after uh, after this. And there is a section of further research, the parts that are not exactly answered in the lecture. Okay, and you can go through the book, uh, go through this chapter for for this lecture. Uh, not all of the things are covered here, but we'll understand most of the things. I mean, at least get the things that are not done and get the things that, that are done. It will be actually a good practice for us. Okay. So another thing is that okay, it's training yet. Let's see what happens. Uh, and I'm also pretty, uh, pretty excited about the next lecture, what is going to happen because uh, he said, we can actually um, deploy a model. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So let's see what happens in the next lecture. Uh, that's it for lecture one and my video. Hello again, everyone. Um, this is my day two um, doing this course, deep learning for coders. And so let's see what's there today. Uh, okay, so we'll be covering chapter one from the book, and later on, we'll do some production realization. I'm pretty excited about that part. Let's see what happens. Meet you again in the middle of the video. Let's start. Let's take a five minute break and we'll come back at 9.55 um, San Francisco time. Uh, here are some of the important things uh, from lecture like two, first half, uh, not half like the first 30 minutes. So uh, there was a uh, difference between classification and regressions, like classification aims to very category and class, and regression actually aims to 
metric numeric quantities. So there are some things like what is the difference between metric and rate accuracy. So uh, you can go through those things on the lecture and the book. So what was the most important part of the lecture are these two things that I noted down. Uh, so one part was the validation stage to tackle overfitting. So okay, but uh, what's the idea of overfitting? So overfitting is when our model is memorizing the thing. I mean. Uh, they are doing well by memorizing, like we are memorizing that a number one picture is a cat or number one picture is a dog. I mean, if we are doing a cat and dog classification. So that's the case. Uh, and uh, how to tackle overfitting? So we have to generalize our model better. So what is what are those things actually? So for validation split, uh, I mean, there is this important concept called validation split. So uh, what this does is that this is the uh, thing that this one is your whole data set and uh, you are going to divide that into three parts uh, one part will be test and we will never look at it that uh, part until you are done with all the experiments i mean all of it so uh, then you can check okay uh, i'm not overfitting or my model is not overfitting and there will be another part in the training for uh, like that we call validation set or depth depth set so uh, what are we doing with the validation set? So we will be training on each epoch. Uh, so if you if you don't know what epoch is, epoch is like the uh, run through each run through the whole data set. So uh, what uh, we will do here is that uh, we will split the uh, training set into two parts. One part will be uh, for training and one part will be for validation. So the validation set, the model we won't see the validation set during training. So we'll train on uh, this part and, and check if the model is performing well or not on the validation part. And uh, here's uh, there was an, another important thing about time series. So if you are working a time series, uh, you shouldn't actually uh, randomly split. You should you have this uh, chunk of a uh, range of uh, data. So that actually uh, is necessary because we are not actually predicting like, uh, what happened earlier? We will be predicting what will happen happen in the future. So uh, we have to predict the future to know the future. Okay. So another part was there like uh, transfer learning and fine tuning. So uh, what actually I can make sense of this thing is that uh, transfer learning is uh, if we go literally transfer learning is transferring what I have learned uh, to another thing. Okay. So let me give an example. Uh, generally, we learn a uh, programming language very well. I mean, all the structures, all the data structures, and everything, um, all, all the algorithms. So uh, after that, uh, we might need to shift to many other languages. There are many languages for different purposes. Right? Like, uh, for example, I started with C++, and later uh, for machine learning and other, other things, I had to uh, work on Python. So uh, if I think it like that, then, okay. So uh, what I am doing, uh, I learned all the things in C plus plus, all the structures in C plus plus. So I had to map with Python. I mean, I had to find out what are the things that I do in C plus plus. What are the things I can do in the same way, or what are what are the ways of doing in Python the same thing? So uh, if if I can say more clearly, then transfer uh, this part is uh, this part is learning. I mean, this is like the pre-trained model. I already learned that thing. So uh, you get it, right? So, and we will use this one to fine tune this one. So let's call this, we are fine tuning on this part. Like we are using the uh, pre-trained model. I mean, our pre-trained learning uh, to fine tune, uh, fine, fine tune on another language. Like we are learning Python. So uh, why do we need fine tuning? Like, uh, so it's like this example that uh, all the things won't be the same in, C++ and Python. So we have to like think about, okay, uh, what what are the data structures in Python? Those are not exactly, exactly same as C++. So then we have to think that how should I implement loop in Python? Because those things are different in, both of, uh, in these two languages. So uh, there are, these are the things actually that I found very interesting. And uh, he actually uh, talked about how uh, the image, how the image models are like the CNNs uh, learn the things and how why we can use it for transfer and 
that being said make it less boring to you let me show you something so first let me give you an example so suppose you are in an apocalypse and you need guns to survive but you don't know how to use guns you only have a broom so what are you gonna do so let's see we are gonna do this so this is actually a great example of uh, transfer learning so when i was a, a beginner uh, i actually didn't understand the concept of transfer learning so uh, this meme came to my feet and suddenly i got exactly what transfer learning is so uh, this is like the uh, pre-trained model so he knows how to use guns and you have the broom so this is your custom layers the layers you put so uh, this whole model can now survive and do the things that you want to do and the situation wants you to do so i think this is a very a good example for transfer learning so let's actually move on to the next part of the lecture so hello again i am done with lesson two so in the remaining part of the lesson uh, what he tried to say uh, the main parts are he showed us how to extract data using microsoft bing then there is a data block api uh, he showed us how that works data block api is in, in fast ai which actually uh, makes things easy for data preprocessing and other stuff so he shows that uh, in the lecture and uh, there are some of the things from fine tuning that uh, he mentions here uh, is that catastrophic forgetting so just like that uh, if we learn uh, python uh, i mean just think that you are a c plus plus expert then you learn python and uh, you do the most of the things in python now so it might happen and it, it actually happens that you might forget many things about c plus plus so uh, if you fine tune a model for uh, something i mean it was good for it was good for many images and now you are fine tuning for only cats and dogs so it can't actually do better in other classification now so uh, that was a important thing and uh, jeremy also went through another thing that was very interesting uh, he went through a paper and showed us how to uh, how to show that paper and prove that the paper is false so uh, that was actually a very nice thing to see he actually reverse engineered the whole thing and uh, he also said that uh, not to use null hypothesis pre value testing ever i mean those are some uh, statistical uh, statistical thing i mean from statistics uh, later there was a block uh, that he showed us the that was to turn the predictive models into something useful in production so uh, i'll share the blog link with you guys uh, and i'll also share my notes in the description okay so the later part what uh, i got from here is that uh, he actually will train a different type of thing i mean he'll train uh, to classify between grizzly bear teddy bear and what else another type of bear uh, yeah black bear so uh, i think i'll do something else uh, just to make it interesting uh, for my experimentation i will try to do i'll try to do uh, anime animation versus cgi classifier so why i will try to do this is because uh, there is a common debate uh, if you watch anime animation you know this that uh, people call uh, that these two things are same so let's see what machine decides i mean those things two things are obviously not same we all know that but let's prove it with uh, machine learning okay so i'll try to do it along with him and i'll uh, there will be something like he said that we'll uh, get to see how we get the things in production and uh, i will change the whole thing so let's see and uh, he also asked us to go through the uh, second chapter of this book so i'll go through this thing but i think the second chapter is not fully covered yet in the uh, i mean in this lecture so uh, I will actually go through the things that are covered in this lecture from here. You can also do that. 
Uh, so that's it for my after lesson two review. Uh, let's see you again in lesson three. And within this time, keep learning. I love this.